Hey, what's up? This is DJ Thunderous. I'm here with Steve Tucker from the awesome death metal band Morbid Angel. What's going on, Steve? I'm sitting here uh, getting ready to go out on tour, man, just uh, sort of running over the songs and preparing myself for rehearsals. Awesome. You've been touring a lot. Uh, we we actually not pounded it this year, but yeah, we've 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 done a few tours over the past over the past few years in the in the states. Awesome. Well, before we get into that, for some of our listeners who may not know the history of Morbid Angel, can you just give us a brief run through about Morbid Angel? Oh uh, man, Morbid Angel started, uh, I guess, uh, mid '80s. The first album came out, I think, in '89. Altars of Madness. Uh, Man, uh, I got involved with the band around 96 or 97. This is the band's, I think, ninth album, man. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's been, this is a death metal band that's lasted over 30 years. Pretty, uh, pretty diverse history. A, a lot of music created over the years and always original, I think. That's cool. Now, have you always been in a death metal or what got you into the death metal scene? Man, you know, I, I'm of the generation that created death metal, man. You know, um, like I'm, I'm just, I guess that's a, that's a time frame of when you were born, you know, and, uh, when I was uh, 16, 17 years old and playing music, uh, it was sort of the beginning phases of death metal. And that's kind of what I was doing before I even knew what the term death metal was. Awesome. So who were some of your favorite bands you used to listen to back then? Man, uh, the first, all the first stuff that, that came out, um, from, from, from Morbid and, uh, the first obituary, man, uh, man, I, I was listening to a million things at once. It seems like it seems like one weekend, a friend of mine showed me Deicide and Morbid Angel. And the next weekend I was listening to, you know, like Malevolent Creation and, and uh, Cannibal Corpse and Obituary and things like that. So it was like literally every week a new band, man. There was so much death metal coming out at the time. So And, and of course, death, man. Death was kind of always the omnipresent, you know, band there. Hell yeah. And it was always good to see everything on MTV back then because you saw it. It was real. Yeah, man. You know, I come from, you know, I was I was in a, a, lot, a lot of the bands that I liked when I was 13 years old, 14 years old were like thrash bands. And a lot of those were sort of uh, when they've got videos on MTV, it was a big deal, man. It was a huge deal. I sat through so many get I, 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 I sat through so many crappy videos to see, you know, Betrayer by a creator that it is unreal. You know, I mean, I literally sat through three hours of crap for one video, man. So that's, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, from there, music just for me was a progression of, uh, you know, I mean, more and more uh, aggressive, I guess, you know. Yeah, that's cool. So who are the current members in the lineup right now? Uh, it's it's uh, myself and Trey and um, Dan is a guitar player. He's actually a, he's a Russian dude, man. Pretty interesting uh, uh, cat. His name Vadim Vaughn. He, uh, and the drummer's a guy named um, Scotty Fuller, man. He's actually phenomenal. The, the kid is, uh, he's a younger dude. I call him kid. He's over 30 years old. <laughs> he's, he's no kid by any means. He's a man in every aspect, man. He's a badass drummer. And uh, it's a solid lineup, man. Everybody contributes uh, exactly how they should, does their job as it should be. You know? That's killer. Now, I saw he's got a new set. He's going to bring that on, on tour with you guys when you go out on tour. Yeah, I actually haven't even seen it yet. So, no. yeah, I mean, I'll see it here in the next couple of days. You know what I mean? We're starting rehearsals now, and I'll, I'll be seeing it in a, in a couple of days. I'm looking forward to seeing it and hearing it. You know, that's awesome. So, now, who writes your lyrics and your music for this band? Well, I mean, through the years, it's been a combination, man. Um, you know, Trey's always written lyrics, and uh, I've I've writ written lyrics uh, pretty much my entire time in Morbid Angel. First album I was on, Formulas Fatal to the Flesh. Trey wrote literally every second of the album so um um after this but since then starting with gateways i've wrote pretty much almost lyrics to almost every single song i'll tell you some of them lyrics are awesome do you guys have like trigger items that you get your lyrics from or where do they come from or is it personal <laughs> uh it, i guess it, it really comes from sort of what's going on and in my head anyway and it's like i just what i the main way that i write lyrics is i just listen to things repeatedly until sort of um lyrics start to happen you know mm -hmm. um and and like and that's just where they come from it's about a vibe dude i, I think morbid angel has always been about a vibe and the lyrics are about sort of the the verbal end of that vibe you know it's you know you have the visual you have the audio and, and then of course you have like the verbal end of it which isn't always necessary in music but sometimes exactly it is. 
Now, when you guys are like uh, practicing and stuff like that, do you know immediately if it's a morbid angel tune or do you play around with it, you know, to see what's going on? Well, I mean, anything Trey brings in is a morbid angel song. I mean, it, it, it's just, I mean, you know, it's, that's the way it does, you know, Morbid Angel is, has been Trey's outlet for over 30 years, you know, um, I contribute to Morbid Angel, uh, and it, 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 as far as music goes, but for me, it's always about, you know, I hope Trey digs this, you know, cause like, first of all, I always want him to like it. I always want him to think it's a Morbid Angel song. Otherwise it's not really going to probably end up being a Morbid Angel song, you know? So, um, I, th- I guess there is some of that. I guess there is, I haven't really had a song turned away in a really long time. No. But like, you know, back in the day, back in gateways, man, I mean, I, I brought probably 80 ideas to the table. <laughs> you know, I was roaring, ready to go. Man. Yo, and do you have them archived out there somewhere that we can check them out? Probably not. You know, I, um, <laughs> I've, I've got, I do have a, my own little archive of quite a bit of it, but it's not any, anywhere that, you know, anyone else could check out. It's just ideas on my computer. Carl Sanders from Nile got me into uh, digital recording back around 97, around 98, I guess it was. And um, since then, dude, everything's been archived on the hard drives, which is brilliant. That's awesome. Now, how do you take care of your voice and how do you get them growls out there? Man, you know, the growl thing something that always kind of came naturally to me, man. It's kind of, I think, just more of a part of my personality. I think, you know, if you know, I start to get a little bit aggressive. That's just where my voice goes. So, like, um, I think that I was never going to be a pretty singer, and I always wanted to, you know, be a singer in a band. You know, actually, I really always wanted to be a drummer, but could never do it. Uh, like, uh, anyway, so, like, for me, it's just, I don't know, it's always my voice. But, you know, on tour, man, it's tricky, you know, especially the tour we're getting ready to do. It's a, it's a winter run, you know, so you're out there and you're shaking hands with people who were at work, shaking hands with people who have the flu and shit like that. So right. It, it can be tricky, you know. I mean, but, you know, honestly, man, I I think I've been doing it so long that unless there's a really something really drastic, I'm usually pretty all right. That's cool. Um, When you toured with Cannibal Corpse, Immolation, Necra and Blood Incantation, how was that for you? It's phenomenal, man. I mean, like, first of all, the, the the two newer bands, Necrot and Blood Incantation, are both brilliant in their own right. Like, um, you know, uh, Blood Incantation, man, has this real dreamy death kind of thing going on. It, it almost throws me back to a mix of Morbid Angel, Cynic, and Death. You know, it's kind of somewhere in there, some weird thing. And then, you know, uh, Necrot, dude, is almost to me like Venom. Like if Venom were a little more modern mm-hmm. evil, they're like Venom to me, and I fucking love it. They're brilliant. I, I I watched, you know, three three four songs of those guys every single night, both bands, man. I and I, you know, I stand in the back and listen to them. Those guys were brilliant. Uh, the Cannibal guys, man, I've known those guys forever. I mean, it was it was it was kind of weird at first, you know. The you know Pat wasn't going to be on the tour, but then they replaced him with Eric, dude. I mean, and come yeah. on, it's like. One of my oldest friends, and I mean, uh, Thrill. So, I mean, that was cool. It's the first time I've ever been on tour with Eric since, uh, like, 2001. Wow. You, you know, so that was great. I mean, I, you know, it was it was cool, and all the shows were huge, man. They were all what you would think, dude. I think, you know, two two of the biggest death metal bands ever going out is sort of a, a, a big thing. And then Immolation came on at the end for the last, I don't remember what it was, man, seven, eight shows. I think it was, and uh, that was great, too. They were badass. I've always wanted to tour with Immolation and finally got to do it at the end of that run. I wish it was a lot more shows, though, to be honest. It would have been great if it could have, if Immolation would have been on all the shows. It would have been brilliant. Hell, yeah, that would be real cool. Now, I know you have the tour coming up with Watain Incantation. How is that tour going to be different from any other? Well, man, I think Watain's a little different. <laughs> you know, like... Um, like, you know, uh, they're a bit, you know, they're a bit over the top and extreme, man. And uh, I mean, dude, I, you know, the, there was a time when that was more of an angel. You know what I mean? Like there was a time when the most extreme thing on the cover of everything was fucking, you know, more of an angel. So, I mean, we can relate to these dudes, man. Oh, yeah. You know, we know we know exactly where these dudes are coming from their lyrics to their to their vibe to everything about them. We can 100 percent relate. So, I mean, it only makes sense. And I mean, John from Incantation has been a personal friend of everyone involved in Morbid Angel, including management shit for so many years that I, I don't even know when it was that it started. You know, he, he's just a brilliant guy. That band's brilliant. And uh, it's going to be a great tour, man. Oh, yeah. You guys are going to have thousands of people, I bet. 
I hope so. I mean, I hope every show is packed. I mean, it's a good package, and I, th- I think it's, it should be great shows. Yeah. All right. Well, before we get back to the tour, I'm going to play one of your tracks here. Here's Pia's A Little Arms. Crank it up. Hell yeah, that was Pia's A Little Arms. That song, I'll have to tell you, the first time I heard it, I had to listen again. Yeah, I think that's a lot of Morbid Angel songs, man. I mean, I, I think I think on every album, there's one or two songs that you can kind of get on the first listen. But I think Morbid Angel as a whole, a lot of it, you have to listen to it a couple times. Some of the you know more trippier songs. I remember the first time I heard God of Emptiness, man. It was the most unexpected thing ever for me, man. You know, I, it really was. It was kind of out of the blue and it was pretty goddamn awesome. You know, so I yep. mean... With Morbid, it's kind of a, sometimes there's that, that shock value to make you look again, but a lot of times it's like, whoa, what was that? And you go back and you listen. But the Piles of Little Arms, man, that's a, that's a great song. It's, it was all brought from um, an idea from the movie Apocalypse Now. Hell yeah. Trey and I talking about it, talking about just how the whole idea of how extreme it is that someone would rather, you know, cut off their arm and cut off, you know, then, then to be subject to, you know, what someone else wants them to be. You know what I mean? It, it's just a great thing. That's killer. And it sounds like you do that live as well. I know I've never seen you live, but from what I've seen out there, you guys do a great show live. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean, we do do it live. It's, uh, I think, probably ended up, you know, every single album ends, ends up with two or three really stick you know, songs that stick, and I think I think uh, Piles is definitely one of those songs on this album. Awesome. Now, I'm not an artist. I don't sing. I don't play an instrument. But I really want to know what you think feeds Morbid Angel. Man, I, I, I think just trying to, like, do something that releases, you know, kind of what's inside. I think that's really what drives the, the people that make up Mor- Morbid Angel. You know, I think uh, it's sort of a necessary release. You know, I think, you know, for Trey to, to write songs, I, I mean, uh, if you've ever met Trey, he's he's a, he's a sort of a different kind of person. man. And like, uh, it's really it's 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 really what his I mean, he's said it since the day I met him. It's it's really his whole life is about just serving this idea of making music. You know? That's so of- like I, I you know, I think that's just that that inner drive, that inner necessity that. Will, you know will make a band you know make morbid angel last over 30 years you know? that's cool now do you guys ever get nervous before going on stage or anything or are you just like we got this and we you get up there and go uh, you know it's both it, it, it's both i mean it's 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 not like um it's not a nervous like um like uh you know i don't know man it's a, it's an anticipation thing like you know you you are you know you, you're anticipating it quite a bit and, but you know it really makes me personally nervous is i'm never really nervous at shows unless there's someone i care about there dude if there's someone i truly care about as in a friend you know as in a like um we played cincinnati back a couple years ago and there was a lot of my friends there from growing up you know what i mean and that made me just want to play my ass off your adrenaline was pumping yeah, I wanted to impress them more than I wanted to impress the, the, the other hundreds of people in the room. I wanted them to walk away going, God damn, Steve's just badass. You know? <laughs> that's what that, that's what I wanted. I mean, you know, there's a you know, when you do it every single night, there's a little bit of knowing, you know, that you're you know, you got this man. You know, I am a badass, whatever. But at the same time, you know, it's like, you know, when all of a sudden there's someone there, you know, you, you just care about their opinion. I mean, it all of a sudden maybe, you know, ups it another intensity, you know. That's killer. I w- wouldn't think anyone would feel that way, but that's kind of cool. So, you know, Dude, one of the hardest shows, one of the hardest shows on every single tour is Tampa. You know, it's a, it's, it's a trip because we know so many fucking people in Tampa, you know, and um, it's like, it's always the, one of the last shows and, and, and there's so many members of people's families and, and friends and just, you know, so many people that, it's, it's it's a very personal show. It's almost like a show for friends and a hundred people you don't know. So that's killer. You know, so you probably play it, there every year. <laughs> I, I mean, it's 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 not. It's kind of weird. It's just it's it's a weird thing, and it's honestly it's an exhausting day, man. Not that I'm whining about how hard my job is. Don't get me wrong. Come on, I, I'm I'm realistic here, but you know, it's one of those days that mentally, at the end of it, you're glad it's over. You know, probably you're probably like, hell yeah, let's all go party now. <laughs> yeah man i mean you know me myself i don't really you know i smoke weed i don't really uh i don't i don't really party i don't drink at all 
Um, but yeah, man, for me, it's just, you know, smoking weed. That's pretty much all I do. Yeah. You probably can't drink with your vocals either. That's probably not good for him. I never liked it anyway, to be honest, man. I, anytime I ever drank one ounce of liquor, it was to get as drunk as I could. So, I mean, you know, it's not something I'm interested in doing every day. Yeah. You were speaking of Tampa. How does the um, music scene in Florida compare to like out of the country or around the world? What's the difference? Man, I don't even live in Tampa. You know, I, I used to. I mean, it's been a number of years now since I lived in Tampa. I fly in, you know, for rehearsals and, um, you know, and doing any sort of thing that we need to do involving the band. And, and then we go, we're based out of there. That's where we tour from. But I, I don't actually live in Florida. I'm not a big fan of sweating my balls off 361 days of the year. I hear you. you. Know, I, I mean, Florida's great. Florida's pretty. Florida's really cool to visit, man. But living there is not me. I'm a dude that's actually the city that I'm from is is kind of in the middle of mountains, man. Not not humongous mountains, but a mountain range. And I tend to kind of be more comfortable in areas that are like that. You know, that's what I mean, cool, it's more yeah. more home to me. And plus, man, you know, I kind of I, I kind of like the quiet. So you know, I'm kind of I kind of like the country a little bit more than than the country in Florida is a swamp. Yeah. (laughs) Go meet up. Go meet up with a gator. (laughs) Yeah. You know, Florida's like so. I mean, Florida's become extremely populated these days. Florida, since I moved away from Florida, it it, it seems like it must have doubled in population. It's crazy. Things that used to be redneck, you know, uh, is it okay? So say redneck. I hope you can say anything you want. Well, used to be redneck little uh, stops that sold boiled peanuts and gas, man, are now towns. (laughs) Wow. They're, they're te- you know what I mean? It's uh, They're now a whole town. So they, so they they came in and put up a Walmart and then a town built up, you know? That's crazy. So I have a couple questions from, from, from some – I reached out to some fans out there, and actually they, they're normally tuned into our station. I have a question from Vinny V. Rocks. What song in your past history was more important to the band? Uh, I, I really – I really don't, not sure I really understand that question. What song in in your past, my his- in the in- band's past history was the most important song to the band? I think that's what he was meaning. I think without a doubt that would have to be God of Emptiness. I mean, when God of Emptiness came out, and I mean, unfortunately, I wasn't in the band yet, but when God of Emptiness came out and the video came out and then it was on Beavis and Budhead, it was fucking huge. It was huge for this whole genre of metal. It, it was humongous. And then right after that, you know, Cannibal did the the whole um, the whole uh, Jim Carrey. Uh, I can't remember the name of the movie, but it was a Jim Carrey movie. They had Cannibal, and then all of a sudden, Death Metal was just like, wow, this this uh, almost weirdly popular thing. You know? That's killer. I love Jim Carrey. He's funny as hell. <laughs> Pet Detective. That's what it was. Oh yeah. Yep. That's a great movie. But. Speaking of the Beavis and Butthead, yesterday I had to watch the video again because I had to remind myself. And you know what? I remember that episode, actually. Yeah, it was funny. I mean, I think he said something like, whoa, what, was that a bear? Yep. You know what I mean? Like, that's <laughs> fucking hilarious. But, but look, <clears throat> the truth is enough of the clip played that it made a lot of people really interested. You know, That's cool. All right. Another question from Chris Denise, one of our good listeners. He wants to know one of you. Who your big four influ- influences are personally? For me personally, uh, number one would be like Venom. Um, Metallica would be the other. Um, you know, uh, early Megadeth to me was absolutely phenomenal. And then, um, man, oh, shit, that's, you know, Dio would have to be, I'd have to put him in there as well. Hell yeah. That's amazing, too. All right, before we get back to more questions, we're going to check out another track. Here's one of your requested tracks. Here's I. Hell yeah, that was I. Tell people about that track, please, because it's amazing. Uh, I mean, that's a song that I actually wrote uh, on, on Gateways. It's a, it's, a, it's a song that when I brought it to Trey, I would have never imagined that was one of the songs that he would have said yes. <laughs> you know, I, yep. I really honestly didn't think so, but... You know, when I brought it to him, I brought it to him with the vocal ideas on it as well. And I think that for him, he was like, wow, this is badass, man. He, he, you know, and then uh, he ended up adding stuff to it. We we did some rearranging and stuff like that and kind of finished the song out together. And uh, it ended up being um, sort of, I think, you know, sort of the the one song on that album that a lot of people like that it's not necessarily doesn't come out as the most popular one still somehow. It's sort of the secret badass song. Mm-hmm. 
And again, with those vocals, I'm telling you, amazing. <laughs> Man, I was pretty cocky back in uh, back in Gateways. I was feeling really, really good about me and uh, my ability to do what I do. Well, well you should be because you're pretty well accomplished. It probably took you a lot of hard work for you guys to get to where you are. Sure, man. It does, indeed. <laughs> That's crazy. All right, another question from one of the fans. Or actually, it's not a question. It's from Paula Campbell from the Metal Fury show. She just wanted to let you know that she'll be seeing you with Watain. Right on. See you then. <laughs> she looks forward to that. She sees she sees tons of concerts, so she's always Badass. getting out there. And my last question, I'm kind of leery about. Oh no, no, no. Okay, it's good. It's from Vicky, another one of our listeners. She wants to know if you have a favorite venue that you've played in Canada, if you'll be or if you'll be returning to Canada. I mean, I'm sure we will be returning to Canada, man. It, it, it costs money to get into Canada, not, and, and uh, it's, it's always a, an issue. We always have issues at the border. So it, it, it's sometimes, you know, it's, it's like, you know, uh, it, it ends up not being something that we can end up doing because of a time restraint. And, you know, it's funny that, you know, they're, they're, they're pretty hard on us coming in their country, to be honest with you. <laughs> but whatever. Uh, my favorite venue that I ever remember playing is – Actually, there was a video of it, and it was from a long time ago. But it was in Montreal, man. It was uh, it was pretty much in uh, I think the old part of Montreal, and um, the venue. I just remember we got to the venue late, so I didn't see the venue in the daytime at all. You know, I didn't see the place empty right. or or any of that. You know, I wasn't familiar at all. And when I walked out on stage, all I remember is this this uh, an amazing amount of people, a balcony, a wooden balcony that wrapped around, and every everyone was it was just packed. And it was hot and everybody was ready to go. You know what I mean? And it, it ended up being a badass show that, you know, is a video that's, you know, on YouTube. And there's over, you know, like <laughs> a million views of the video. So, that's I mean, awesome. It, yeah. I, maybe I exaggerated that number. I don't know. That's what I was told. So Probably not I've, because I was watching quite a few of your videos yesterday. You guys have like a phenomenal amount of people that have watched your videos. Well, that's great. I mean, that, you know, that's great. You know, I mean, people just have that ability now to to videotape you. I mean, everybody has that ability in their pocket. So, you know, there's a lot of it out there now. You know, I think the one from Quebec, I think it was in like 1999 or 98 or something. It was maybe the Formulas tour. It must have been. But that show was absolutely brilliant, man. You know, and it, it was funny because it was a show we showed up right before, walked out on stage. We did the show and it ended up just being one of the Best shows I, you know, can remember in my entire career. It's funny how that shit happens. That is, that's crazy. Now, have you guys have any, like, um, <coughs> things blowing up on stage or anything breaking or something, like, memorable? Man, I mean, you know, there's always issues on stage. I mean, you know, the last tour I had my, I had a strap lock, something that's supposed to never break. I mean, it's, it's supposed to, it's your safety net. And I had one break on me on stage, you know. That's what I get for playing bass like a gorilla, you know. <laughs> You were shaking your axe. <laughs> I definitely was not shaking my ass, but I was pretty much probably banging on that bass pretty hard. <laughs> awesome. All right, we're going to check out your last track here. Here's Summoning Redemption. Crank it up. Hell yeah, that was Summoning Redemption. We're actually going to end this interview here. Thank you so much, Steve, for calling the Thunderhead show on Metal Devastation Radio. Hope your tour is killer and you sell tons of albums and Maybe we can talk again sometime. I appreciate it, and uh, I'll talk to you guys again another time. Man. All right, rock on. All right, well, stay brutal. This is Steve Tucker from Morbid Angel, and you're tuned in to the Thunderhead Show on MetalDevastationRadio.com. 